taxis. Oh yeah. You know, much, yeah. much fewer. So. They've gone out of business in San Francisco. Um, I don't know how much longer they have here, but it's, it's, a, it's a thing that's happening. For sure. But then, yeah, it's, yeah. well, we, we know this was an innovation entrepreneurship conference, yeah, so yeah. it's pretty, you know, pretty disruptive. Okay, I mean, yeah, Uber's yeah. pretty disruptive. You know, we weren't talking about that at the conference. I was talking about Mars and, and, you have them and Hubble. Are you based out of DC? Oh. Yeah, okay. DC headquarters. Hello, Facebook. I'm Evan Dushevsky, features editor with PCMag.com. Uh, if you watch the news lately, it's very easy to become cynical and become think that mankind can only do bad things and to each other and to the planet. But we also have the capability for doing great things like space exploration. And over the last few years, we've had some really big moments in space exploration. Uh, let's see, there's New Horizons last year went to Pluto for a close-up. Whoever thought we'd see Pluto? Uh, the Dawn spacecraft went to the Dr Dwarf Planet Series. Uh, the ESA, the European Space Agency, they successfully landed a probe on a planet. And then just a few weeks ago, SpaceX managed, after a few tries, to land a rocket upright in a barge in the middle of the ocean. Now, for most of my lifetime, and maybe for a lot of yours, NASA was always at the center of space exploration. A little less these days because there's, a, I hope, a uh, mostly collegial competition amongst uh, other countries and their space agencies, but also there's a burgeoning private space industry. So where does NASA fit in? Well, that's why we have our guest, Dr. David Newman, who is the deputy administrator for NASA to help answer some of these questions and, and we'll get into it but also if you guys have any questions about space about space exploration about where we're going leave them in the comments social Pete has taken it and he will uh, read them out loud later in the show so dr. Newman thank you so much for joining us thank you Evan great to be here with PC magazine the whole team here mm -hmm. so NASA is a well and live we are on our journey to Mars mm -hmm. all of those great examples you gave mm -hmm. um, we're at the heart and center of them that's what that's what NASA is doing we're funding everything you mm -hmm. just talked about we're uh, funding all of it it's um, first let's back up why exploration it, mm -hmm. it is about the enduring questions mm -hmm. for us uh, are there other habitable worlds out there mm -hmm. other habitable planets did life exist anywhere else in the universe mm -hmm. we're going to Mars to look we're searching for past life mm -hmm. So all of these, you know, these enduring questions, again, boots on Mars mm -hmm. by 2030 in our journey to Mars plan. You mentioned New Horizons. Mm -hmm. What a great year. Last mm -hmm. year, got to Pluto. We've explored every planet. I count mm -hmm. dwarf planets still. Mm -hmm. Great to get there. And um, now, July 4th, where will you be? Oh, oh, because we were that is we are going to talk about that later. The okay. Juno spacecraft. That's it. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna to get to some of the big missions in a bit. Okay. Uh, but also just to talk about, you mentioned um, the plan to go. To, what is the plan for NASA to get to Mars right now? You said 2030. So what kind of time? 2030 is boots on Mars. So it's three wow. phases. Okay. And uh, historically, you probably mm -hmm. remember. You might be too young. I remember Apollo. That's how I got you mm -hmm. know inspired. That's why I'm an aerospace engineer. Mm -hmm. But three phases: uh, Mercury, Gemini, Apollo. Mm -hmm. Right? Because you're you're trying, you're testing. So I like to explain our journey to Mars in three phases mm -hmm. as well. We've been doing the first phase. Mm -hmm. We're almost completing the first phase. That's International Space Station. Mm -hmm. We're in low Earth orbit. For the last 16 years, we've had humans, NASA mm -hmm. astronauts, Russian cosmonauts, the world. We've mm -hmm. had 22, uh, 222 folks in, in space in low Earth orbit. And we are buying down the human health risks. Mm -hmm. Really important. Keep our astronauts healthy and well. Look at all of our human health risks. We learn a lot about that. Um, every we're doing six month crews mm -hmm. except for the Scott Kelly uh, mission the one year mm -hmm. mission we can talk about mm -hmm. but in the six month missions we do about 250 scientific experiments each mm -hmm. each increment and uh, that's not all then we're doing technology demonstrations as well mm -hmm. so that's life in low earth orbit phase one mm -hmm. and we're on space station it's a partnership with five main partners mm -hmm. 15 different nations so it's a great model of really incredible international partnerships mm -hmm. Then we move on. We're designing, building, constructing today our space launch system. Mm -hmm. It's huge. More powerful than Saturn V. Mm -hmm. We haven't done this, you know, in decades. Uh, so we're under development. It's really, I mean, it's, as an engineer, it is really cool. Mm -hmm. You need to come down and see it at our Machu facility. Cool. What is it? 6.5 meters in diameter, 21 mm -hmm. meters high. Most powerful heavy mm -hmm. lift ever designed and built. Mm -hmm. And the Orion capsule goes on top. Mm -hmm. That's to carry the astronauts. So 2018, mm -hmm. very shortly, we'll fly what we call EM-1. It's mm -hmm. Exploration Mission 1. And uh, then in early 2020s, EM-2 mm -hmm. with astronauts on board. So the entire 2020s, we are back Earth-Moon orbit, and we go further than lunar orbit to mm -hmm. deep space. Mm -hmm. And that's a huge technology push. Mm -hmm. That's all about innovation. That's about the technologies we need to test and have in deep space, mm -hmm. um, in space propulsion, mm -hmm. advanced life support systems, deep space habs. Mm -hmm. All of these we test out, we try again phase two. Mm -hmm. And we call that Earth-reliant, but mm -hmm. we're further away, of course. And final phase is 
Mars orbit, mm -hmm. and then boots on Mars. Mm -hmm. When we get to phase three, that's what we have slated for the 2030s, mm -hmm. and that's when we're Earth independent. That's a big deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, closer to Earth here on space station, phase two, get out to Earth, Earth moon orbit, we call it cis lunar, mm -hmm. and then we get to Martian orbit, and then we're completely Earth independent. Mm. And so you need all kinds of things. Autonomous systems, right? Yeah, yeah. It's humans and machines always working together, mm -hmm. but then the drivers, and we have to land. Mm -hmm. One of the big tall poles is what we call, you know, entry descent landing. Mm -hmm. We can, you have a good little model here for me, it's kind of like a, a little lunar 3D mm -hmm. printed thing I love that we're talking about. Well, we know how to do that, though, you know, for Curiosity rover, you mm -hmm. know, one metric ton, mm -hmm. maybe two, but it doesn't scale. So we have to figure out how to land, again, our astronauts, health, healthy, safe, mm -hmm. safety on Mars. And you're looking at, you know, 20 metric tons. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're working on today. But we're well on our way, so we're closer than humans have ever been today to mm -hmm. sending people to, to Mars. So it is really pretty, pretty revolutionary. It's a fun, it's, I have a great job. I get to think about this every day. Mm -hmm. Uh, just, there's actually one question, just a follow-up question, is that there was an uh, independent mission, I don't believe associated in any official capacity with NASA, is Mars One, mm -hmm. where they uh, want to send people to live on Mars to forever, to, to never come back. I heard, recently heard an interview with the CEO of that organization. I think it's a bit of a controversial organization, but he says that like uh, the biggest engineering, almost in, impossible is to re, is to leave Mars because of the, the rocket that would need it, because it's hard enough to do it under Earth conditions. For um, ascent. Yeah. Sure, sure. So what do you think of that mission, or does NASA? No, right, well, you, it's, yeah. they don't have any, they don't have the funding, they don't mm -hmm. have the backing, they don't yeah, yeah. have the technical uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> team. It's assembled. more of an aspirational I, sort of I like, thing. Yeah, the vision's great, yeah, you know, yeah. let's get people excited. We we want to take everyone with us, but uh -huh. but we, NASA, and I think all world space agencies will do round trips. Mm -hmm. So we're going to send people. Mm -hmm. Now we got to get the cadence. Let's send you know more people mm -hmm. and have many round trip missions. That's what that's what we're planning on. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely a round trip. I think you're gonna. You want to go? I think you're going to want to come I, back and see your I family. I kind of want to go. I also want to see. Them. Bring them with me. Yeah. Um, there you go. <laughs> and I see Facebook is blowing up. Pete, what you got? Uh, first off, do you believe that there is other life in the universe, mm -hmm. and what is NASA doing to contact it? That is a great question. Mm -hmm. Is there life in the universe? That is, um, that's the big enduring question. Mm -hmm. Could there be habitable planets? So we are looking for the evidence of past life. And uh, again, even in our solar system, Earth, Mars, mm -hmm. both 4.5 billion years old, sister planets. And so that's why looking for life, I think it'll be past life, kind of like fossilized past life, mm -hmm. maybe microbial. But it's so important because all of our exploring, <laughs> searching for life, in reflection, it tells us about Earth. It tells us that's the important, enduring questions. I do truly believe we'll be interplanetary. So we'll have mm -hmm. people on Earth, we'll have people to Mars, and then we look way out mm -hmm. when we talk about habitable planets. Mm -hmm. Have you heard about these exoplanets? Sure. Yeah, yeah. 20 years. And we didn't, that wasn't a discipline. That wasn't, you couldn't study it 20 mm -hmm. years ago. Now we have thousands. Mm -hmm. We just let out a big, I don't know if you saw our press release, just yep. came out, just you know, categorized you know, 1,200 more. Mm -hmm. So there's thousands of these. Uh, exoplanets. Mm -hmm. We're looking for Earth size, yeah. Earth size exoplanets. <laughs> There's a couple dozen that we call are kind of in the habitable zone. Mm -hmm. Those look very interesting. Now they're very, very far away, so mm -hmm. we're not getting to them anytime soon, especially mm -hmm. not with humans again. Our sites are humans to humans to Mars, mm -hmm. but um, there's ocean worlds out there, mm -hmm. just phenomenal. We know that Europa, you know, moon of uh, Jupiter, has a huge ocean mm -hmm. underneath all the ice. But that's a great place to go in the solar system to look for life. Mm -hmm. uh, Facebook, what else you got? I've got a few people actually asking whether NASA is going to go back to the surface of the moon <laughs> and how, how the surface of the moon and whether that figures into uh, your future plans much. So, so our NASA plans right now, our journey to Mars, Mars is the horizon mm -hmm. goal. Again, is the three phases. So we will give someone a you know, ride. We'll be in lunar orbit. Again, we're there testing out our technologies, investing, looking at the deep space environment. Now, if someone else, we're saying, here's our plan. We're real open about it. Here's our plan. Here's our journey to Mars. Here's all the elements that the U.S. is leading, that NASA is leading. So if another uh, space nation mm -hmm. or even private folks want to come up and say, boom, we'll do the lunar lander, we say, yeah, we're partnering. So we're partnering with everyone. We're looking. It's a global exploration. Mm -hmm. It's not one nation. It's not one agency, but we're saying, here's what NASA is going to lead. Mm -hmm. So if someone else leads a lunar lander, we'll be there. And, you know, I sure hope there's a NASA astronaut on board. Mm -hmm. But again, we'll, we'll get to uh, Earth-Moon orbit, but uh, we don't want to stop. Uh, we want to, you know, again, we're really focused uh, 
on the horizon goal of Mars. Mm -hmm. um, now, just to talk about uh, how we're going to get the steps to get there, <laughs> one of the big things that I mentioned earlier was the private space industry. Now, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, libertarians, you know who you are, would like to point to things like SpaceX and say, um, you know, look, isn't it great that the private industry is taking over? And it is great, but what people don't seem to realize or, or are mentioned as often is that SpaceX did it with decades of publicly funded research before that. And I don't know if you want to get too political, but I'm just wondering if, there, if you have a general philosophy about what should be publicly funded and then before it gets handed over to private industry. Yeah. Well, it's not handed, we work together mm -hmm. and it's, uh, you mentioned, uh, you, know, you know, a little bit of cooperation mm -hmm. before. It's collaboration to us, pr public-private. So mm -hmm. we're funding SpaceX right. and Boeing, you know, and everyone. We're mm -hmm. funding aerospace industry. That's what government should do. Mm -hmm. And we're counting on their success. What's new is we're providing, we're looking at them for services. Mm -hmm. So NASA's not doing it all. So right now, three companies, right? So SpaceX mm -hmm. and Orbital ATK, mm -hmm. they're getting our cargo up to space station. So we've given them those contracts, but we're buying those services. Mm -hmm. We're not buying their crafts. So we're funding them now, and that's what we think absolutely NASA should do, government should do. And then if we can, they can commercialize low Earth orbit, mm -hmm. that's great. That's mm -hmm. what we're hoping. We're planting the seeds. And then uh, now Sierra and Nevada, you heard mm -hmm. about that. They're going to be the third company in the second phase now of Space Station to get us cargo, deliver mm -hmm. our cargo. Coming right behind that, just in just over a year, then SpaceX and Boeing are going to be delivering our astronauts to mm -hmm. Space Station. So we're buying the services for cargo so mm -hmm. and, and crew. So we have cargo and crew, those um, services mm -hmm. for the private sector. Mm -hmm. That's just that's a win-win. Yeah, that's good for the government. That's good for the private companies. Mm -hmm. So we're all in this together, and we want everyone to succeed. Mm -hmm. We're placing our bets. We want everyone to succeed. Mm -hmm. And then NASA, we can get on with exploration. Mm -hmm. But we love seeing all the the private folks, uh, you know, coming alive. And they mm -hmm. might be in friendly. They might be in friendly cooperation with themselves. For mm -hmm. us, from NASA and the private industry, it's all collaboration. Mm -hmm. So we're working with all of them. Great. Uh, and then also, with, we mentioned a bit earlier about some of the big missions that we have coming up in just in the next few years. You mentioned on July 4th, there's going to be a big thing happening. The Juno spacecraft is going to arrive in, into orbit around Jupiter. Right. Uh, we've been to Jupiter before, but what, is, what are we gonna, hoping to learn and to see in this mission? This is, well, I'm really excited about, actually, it's our biggest effort in citizen science. So mm -hmm. July 4th, you get, we'll be the apogee, we'll be the closest orbit, we'll stay in orbit, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. We have incredible scientific instruments on board, so we're studying Jupiter. But uh, we're also going to say, hey, world, Mm -hmm. Where do you want it? Where should we point? So it's called Juno Cam, mm -hmm. and we're sending back the first HD, the high def uh, images will come back on July 4th, and we're just going to open it up. Mm -hmm. As long as we're in orbit, we're going to say, okay, uh, to all the public, where do you want to help us explore? We really want to take mm -hmm. people with us to Jupiter, and I think that's the best way to do it. So it's a huge experiment, you know, in citizen science. Mm -hmm. So you can tell us where you want to look on Jupiter, mm -hmm. and we'll be in, you know, help us with those imaging. We'll point the camera. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, yeah, that's Juno. The countdown's begun. I can't wait for 4th of July. Mm -hmm. And everyone's going to have a party for us for getting there. You know? <laughs> a lot of fire, fireworks going on. Definitely. Uh, Facebook, what else you got? Uh, we have a couple of people that are curious about what deep space travel is going to be like in terms of the actual technology behind it. Like um, people are saying, like, are there going to be wormholes or are there going to be speed of light travel? <laughs> like what, uh, what exactly do you think is going to be the well, reality? Well, yeah, that's, that's a little bit out there. The, 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 the near term mm -hmm. space travel is, is, again, going on our uh, space launch system. That's mm -hmm. what we're developing and designing can get us to, to deep space, what we call, you know, Earth, Moon orbit, mm -hmm. deep space beyond that. Um, the Lagrangian points are you know, incredible places to go. Uh, both scientifically and, and we have, a, I don't know if you know, our Discover mission. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. It's at L1, you know, Lagrangian point one. That's a gravity neutral point mm -hmm. between the sun and earth. So halfway between the sun and earth, boom, mm -hmm. that's Lagrangian point one. Why is that so special? It's gravity neutral. And that mission is actually, I call it, you know, it's the solar system weather buoy. Uh -huh. it's, taking, it's taking all the solar radiation mm -hmm. and the sun's weather, if you will, radiation. It's halfway between and then it predictively tells mm -hmm. us, you know, all that's moving toward Earth. So that's just an example of deep space, where we're going realistically now. You know, the question is a little bit more, you know, Star Wars or, or you know, worms. Um, James Webb Space uh -huh. Telescope, sure. I want to mention. Wanna talk about that's that that's yeah, kind of yeah. related to the question yeah. there. Um, it's doing everything, but it's amazing. Mm -hmm. That's an, you know, infrared um, telescope. I got to see it. It's mm -hmm. 18 mirrors, you know, that we can and, tune. And fully funded now. There was some question if, if it was It's on be. track. Okay. Honestly, it will, um, mm -hmm. I've already seen it. Uh -huh. It's built, designed. It's heading from our Goddard Space Flight Center mm -hmm. to Houston, so mm -hmm. for thermal vacuum mm -hmm. chamber testing. And then it goes on to Southern California. Mm -hmm. uh, Grumman, the industry, the main, the main contractors, gets mm -hmm. on a barge. Mm -hmm and heads down to French Guiana, mm -hmm. and we're launching on an Ariane 5 in 2018. And what will that be able to do that, it's the successor to Hubble telescope, what mm -hmm. will that be able to see and tell us that uh, Hubble can't right now? 
Well, it's supposed to be, again, 26 years we've been, uh, you know, investigating with Hubble and it's revolutionized, mm -hmm. you know, all of space science. So James Webb is supposed to be 100 times more powerful. Mm. Dr. Mather, our Nobel laureate at NASA, he told me, you know, yeah. 100 times more powerful. Mm -hmm. Again, they're in different frequencies. Um, James Webb is, is infrared, mm -hmm. Hubble's optical. Mm -hmm. So you kind of put them together and it goes with the rest of the telescopes out there. But it's uh, really focused on the beginnings of the universe. Mm -hmm. And it'll be looking at uh, dark energy, dark matter, mm -hmm. and really the beginning. So it'll look even further back, if you will, in time. Mm -hmm. Hubble is out, it, Hubble's in low Earth orbit. Sometimes people don't know that. Know that. Mm -hmm. So Hubble's up there in low Earth orbit, peering out. But Hubble now has shown us over 13 billion light years. Mm -hmm. Amazing. It blows yeah. my mind, you know? So we get James Webb up there, and like I said, uh, just can't even believe what 100 times more powerful, you know? Mm -hmm. But uh, again, so it's really looking for the, the secrets, if you will, mm -hmm. of the universe, dark energy, um, dark matter, and it's, it's powerful. It's a, beautiful, it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a beautiful spacecraft, that's for sure. So 2018, mm -hmm. James Webb launches. And then uh, New Horizons, now it was at Pluto, and then it's gone further into the Kuiper Belt. Is it how yes. pronounce that? Uh-huh, that's okay. good, that's um, good. And do we have, does it have a destination in mind? Well, it's yeah. just, I mean, it's, we're taking data as it goes through, since uh -huh. we've never been with, you know, mm -hmm. through this Kuiper Belt. But so is it going to an object to just, visit? And um, it's proposed. No, right, yeah. well, not, not, to, not to land or anything like yeah. that. It's not a lander, it's just, it's just flying out yeah. in the trajectory. We, you know, know the orbit that mm -hmm. it's going on, taking as much data as it can. Mm -hmm. And it's getting close to, it's really the end of its mission, mm -hmm. since we went past Pluto. But, but now um, the proposal's in for extended mission. Mm -hmm. That's what we do to missions. And so we'll see. That has to get, you know, that has to get peer reviewed. Mm -hmm. It has to get judged. And those decisions will come in the fall, mm -hmm. you know, the extension of, of New Horizons to, to keep it going mm -hmm. as, as long as it, you know, as long as we can. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure Facebook is blowing up. Pete, what you got? Someone's asking about uh, what NASA's plans are to support the STEM initiative in the school uh, system here Great. in the U.S. Thank you for asking the STEM question because uh, that's one of my favorite things to talk mm -hmm. about. Now, I call it STEAMED uh, very intentionally mm -hmm. because uh, it's always, the arts are always in. The arts mm -hmm. are always in for me. As an aerospace engineer, I'm, an, I'm the E part of that. But um, really important, I'm talking to you about our journey to Mars, right? Well, mm -hmm. guess what? I need the storytellers. I need the artists. They're the visionaries ones. They tell humanity, you know, they bring humanity on our journey with us. Mm -hmm. They tell the stories. So you can't do it without the storytellers. We need the scientists, the technologists, the engineers to begin. The artists are important. Mathematicians, all of my training, you know, we're, it's based on math and, and physics if you want to become an engineer. You know, we build and design and fly things. So I put a D on the end now. Mm -hmm. So I call it steamed. And uh, guess what? Well, we have a great little model here. There is a 3D maker generation out there, mm -hmm. and I'm telling them, you're in. You're my D. You know, so the steamed generation, and the point is to be inclusive. We need every little girl and boy out there. Mm -hmm. you're, you're all in, and NASA, you know, is here having it, you know, telling you, we, we need you. We need your brain power, mm -hmm. and so join us. So, again, every opportunity I get, mm -hmm. I just love to go mm -hmm. to schools and museums and look at that generation, and all they do, you know, they smile. They can, they can mm -hmm. see themselves as the... They, I call them the Mars generation. You know, mm -hmm. what, hap what happens after millennials, right? Well, it's my Mars generation. Mm -hmm. um, now, there's also, uh, just to go back to some uh, independent projects that are not necessarily NASA related, uh, there are two that I, I wanted to talk about. One is uh, Planetary Resource, that's uh, Peter Diamandis, the guy from, um, was, you've, you've probably heard of uh, before, he's done a lot of things. Uh, but I interviewed him uh, last year, and he, this company wants to actually capture asteroids to mine them, because uh, he wants to be the first trillionaire. Uh, and uh, so that, that's one big project. And the other one is also kind of like a Silicon Valley based <laughs> project, is Breakthrough Starshot, uh, Zuckerberg's involved, it was just announced. Uh, last month, and they want to actually send a whole bunch of um, microsatellites to Alpha Centauri, mm -hmm. um, and they said they're going to launch them in 20 years, and it'll take 20 years to get there, mm -hmm. and then another four or five years to actually just get the images back. So it's a long-term bet. Yeah. Um, does NASA? Are, are you guys working with either of those organizations? And do you have any uh, thoughts on them? Yeah, thank you. So, yeah. uh, so we talked to them again. I mean charge of all NASA partnerships, so yeah. uh, 700 of them with okay. 120 different nations. Yeah. So we're always talking to, to everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, Got to give a shout out to Peter. We're, yeah, uh, yeah. we're dear friends, so you oh, know, full disclosure. We were grad yeah. school buddies together oh, yeah. at MIT. I think I was the first subject on his artificial gravity sleeper. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, great, great and great visionary. Mm -hmm. 
and looking at that, and, and NASA, again, we're going to asteroids. Um, September 4th, mm -hmm. we're going to launch OSIRIS-REx, mm -hmm. another one of our missions. And uh, OREx, we call it, OSIRIS-REx, mm -hmm. is going to an asteroid, mm -hmm. going to bring back a sample. Cool. So again, so when the commercial guy, that's what's so great about the private folks, uh -huh. when they commercialize these, we all have the same dreams, mm -hmm. but they can commercialize it. The government you know, agency doesn't commercialize it, mm -hmm. so they can make a business out of it mm -hmm. and make money out of it. That's great. And again, so we're just, we want everyone to succeed. So, mm -hmm. so that's a great dream, and what can we do with, you know, going to the asteroids and, and maybe mining them. And then Alpha Centauri, that's really far out. Yeah, so yeah. that's great too, just yeah. bending our brains you know, yeah. making us all think about how far can we really go and mm -hmm. can we explore. So that, as you mentioned, yeah. I'm not sure if I'll be alive to, to see that, but mm -hmm. I, I love the vision. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, Facebook, what else you got? For the first uh, manned missions to Mars, mm -hmm. uh, how long do you envision people actually staying on Mars itself? Oh. Thanks. So the mission is, you know, just is over a three-year mission. So think mm -hmm. about two years round trip, um, again, maybe just six months out. You know, depends on orbital mechanics, but basically two years round trip in in going and coming back. Mm -hmm. And then we hope it'll be either five or six hundred days on the surface of Mars. Mm -hmm. You have a couple different options. It all depends on the orbit. So go for thirty days. That's a, that's a short stay. So mm -hmm. why don't we go again? We're going to search for the evidence of, of life. Mm -hmm. We'll have you know we have a whole arsenal already on Mars today. Mm -hmm. People need to remember we've been exploring Mars for fifty years mm -hmm. with our um, you know Maven is up there now mm -hmm. orbiting breakthrough. Mm -hmm. Told us the data from Maven has told us how Mars lost its atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have Curiosity, you know, Mars Science Lab, roaming around, giving us data back every day. Mm -hmm. You know, the topology and just just all these incredible things. So when we get to Mars with humans, again, we're we're planning for the 2030s, and so the first first mission probably about four people, mm -hmm. and um, you know, over three years. But that's that's five six hundred days to to live on the surface. Wow. Um, do you think we'll ever step on a different planetary body, like an asteroid or something other than the moon and Mars in the next 20, 30 I, years? I hope so. Okay. I hope so. Absolutely. No concrete plans, yeah. though, on the NASA side for any of those. Well, in, yeah. the question was, you know, asked before, uh, mm -hmm. there will be people on the moon for sure. I okay. hope it's a, a NASA astronaut. Again, we're not uh, investing right now in the mm -hmm. lander. Mm -hmm. I can't do everything, you right. know, and so we have to place our, our bets. But absolutely, mm -hmm. I think uh, humans will, will be back on the, on the moon, exploring the moon. And the moon is right in line. So with our journey to Mars, you know, it's Earth, the lower Earth orbit, space stations, moon, and Mars. So that's all really part of the exploration, mm -hmm. you know, vision that, that we have. So, uh, yeah, imagine, you know, soon, I mean, in the next uh, couple decades, we'll have people on the move, we'll have people on Mars, for mm -hmm. sure, we'll reach our goals. And then it would be, you know, beyond that, then, again, probably first with um, orbiters, landers, and, and people out in the distant future mm -hmm. when we start going to ocean worlds and, mm -hmm. and other places in the solar system. Great. Oh, I think we have one final, we have time for one final Facebook question. Pete, what you got? Uh, someone was asking what your thoughts are about EM drive, the EM drive rather, and like what you think about its chances. And I guess what is that? What, okay, let me what explain it? what that is first. Is it? No, I don't know. What's the question? EM oh, drive? I'm, yeah. The electromagnetic, yeah, warp drive. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's it's. Uh, you, you, science, stump, you stump the NASA Yeah, no, it's here. science. It's science fiction. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not science fact. We yeah. try to. I try to stick to science <laughs> fact. <laughs> Great. All right, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was all the time we have. It's been great. Hey, Facebook, if you like these interviews and we want to bring more interesting people to talk to you, uh, give us a like, give us a share. That's the best compliment we can get. Uh, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Great. Thanks, Evan. Pleasure. Okay. <laughs>